question. We would like to draw the attention of the nation to the fact that um, the PF government wants Zambians to pay for their economic meltdown. The meltdown of the economy that has been caused by PF in particular, PF is incompetence, PF is inability to manage our country's affairs, arising mainly from three areas. Number one, the overborrowing that PF has engaged themselves since they came into office against advice that had been given by many citizens, including ourselves. We warned PF not to take our country back to a debt trap, to a debt burden, but they did not listen. Number two, the corruption in the PF, excessive corruption in the PF, be it in the road sector, where they're constructing very poor quality roads at a high cost at a cost unseen in this country before, at a cost unseen in this region before. Because we can compare the cost of roads in this country with those being constructed in neighboring countries. And without doubt, the PF is spending more money per kilometer of the road than other countries in the region. We're still, the PF, are claiming that they are building infrastructure in the name of roads. Very poor quality roads. Yet in the neighboring countries, the roads are constructed to high standards at a lower cost because of corruption. The corruption we've seen in the purchase of ambulances, the corruption we've seen in the purchase of fire tenders that have not contained fires, as we have seen recently, the corruption in the agricultural sector, cheating the already distressed farmers, and several other areas that we see in the PF around the issues of extracting money from citizens into their pockets. Just imagine the morality of extracting money from citizens who are already stressed into the pockets of those, those that are already living lavishly. How cruel can a government be? Only a PF government can be this cruel. Number three, the overspending that we're seeing under the PF. Why is it that they continue traveling at a great cost? when we were informed that the austerity measures, so-called austerity measures that have implemented, will include cutting expenditure in areas such as travel. Why is it that the PF pronounced expenditure cuts only to see them spending more? More money which is not theirs, money which belongs to the already suffering citizens of Zambia. The PF want the youth, distressed youth, unemployed youth, they want the women who are unable to trade and trade to earn enough in markets or elsewhere. And the children who are in school, who are now being thrown out of school, they want the average citizen of Zambia to pay for their failure of leadership. The PF want us citizens to pay for their failure of management through excessive taxes and other punitive measures. The tax you see on internet, irresponsible tax you see which has been slapped on internet or WhatsApp, you can call it a levy if you wish. If you wish, it's still a tax. 
is just one amongst many taxes. These, as you all know, include the already high pay as you have, the VAT that you pay on most of the goods that you purchase, the road tax that you are asked to pay, carbon emission tax, toll gate levy that you pay for moving to your home from work every day or going to work if you're working, every day you have to pay that tax. The fuel levy, and you know the controversial borehole levy that will be introduced. The withholding tax on renters, taxing widows who have no other money, no other source of income. The ruthless government takes the first opportunity to share in the rental income from a widow who struggled to build that house. A house the government did not contribute in any way to build. But they are saying to this widow, pay us first. TV levy and many others. They want the citizens of Zambia who they have extracted not less than 90% of all their salary that they earn, all the income that they earn. Which money should have been used to educate children, to feed children, and has caused excessive poverty in the homes. PF wants to collect all these taxes, all these levies, to support their expensive lifestyles, to support the corrupt few in the PF. Because it's not everybody in the PF who is enjoying who is benefiting, benefiting from this pain that the PF has caused the citizens of Zambia. This is a party that promised that citizens will have and the chance of getting a job is slim or non-existent at all. Those that are in jobs are underpaid but also as we have said already, are having to pay these huge taxes, leaving them only with 10%, if they are lucky, of income to send their children to school, which they can't, to feed their children, families, which they can't, to ride a minibus to go to see the sick in hospital, which they can't, because the minibus fares in corner, amongst other reasons, because of the high cost of fuel. Everything in the country is unaffordable now. But still, you have a small number in PF wanting to extract more money from citizens. The question that we should ask ourselves, how much more can the citizens of Zambia, those who live in this country, those who do business in this country, how much more pain can they bear I'm sure if each one of us listening to this conversation today ask themselves a question, are they better today under PF than they were just a few years ago under a different government? I bet most of us will answer and answer in a similar way. We are worse off now than we were under a government before PF. So the question is that, at what point will you, the citizens of Zambia, say enough is enough? At what point will you refuse to fund the corruption, to fund the excessive borrowing, which money they borrow they use for consumption, which money they borrow they use to finance projects outside of this country and create jobs outside Zambia. How long will you citizens and those of us, others who live in this country, do business in this country, are willing to allow or watch others spending your money lavishly, recklessly, while 
you fail to feed your children. That's a question which we Zambians must answer. For me, I think time has come to say no to such a government. No to such a small group of greedy people that are stealing from everybody. And it is at this point that Zambians must come together and walk together, hold each other's hands and say, this we shall not allow anymore. And I believe and trust that citizens will do exactly that. They've done it before in a very, very peaceful manner when they said no to the one-party state in the late 80s, to be specific, 89, 1991. Zambians have always come together as they did at that time. And later on, in 2001, when somebody wanted the third term, Zambians came together and said no to the third term. And they did it peaceably. This is another time that Zambians must come together and say no to this extravagant, corrupt PF government. This is a time, as we've done before, and maybe even more now, that we should unite and put our foot down and do that which is constitutionally right, which is legally right, which is really a common sense thing. To stop those that are cheating, stealing, from poor Zambians. I thank you. Any questions? Do you have any questions, colleagues? Yes, lady. Around this subject, I would like us to agree that the question <laughs> must be around this subject. Uh, just to be polite, I think we should leave questions that are outside this address. Uh, we can arrange another interview for that. Yes. Politely so. So, moderator, maybe we can reach consensus on that. I think it's agreed. I know you have a lot you want to discuss. I know you appetize the business. <laughs> um, so, it helps send the message clearly around this side. Over to you. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Oscar Piri from Mugiti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on your last point, I don't know if uh, it's a polite way to tell people or Zambians that uh, maybe they should uh, demonstrate peacefully. Maybe if I go to write. Okay. Yes, I've taken note. I will answer. Any other question? You're still signing your question. <laughs> Maybe we can answer this one for now. Our colleague Piri uh, from Mobi Television. What should Zambians do? What are we asking them to do? We are asking Zambians. To do that which is correct. We are asking Zambians to unite as they've done before to say no when a government is failing to provide leadership. Because they are the ones who produce governments, they are the ones who put governments in office. Peaceful demonstrations are part of that name because it's a constitutional right. It's a human right to express ourselves through peaceful demonstration. And no decent government in the world should stop people from having peaceful demonstrations when the fundamental law allows it, when common sense logic allows it. Because Zambians have done it before. They've absolutely done it before. As I cited the examples of 1991, we were demonstrating peaceably. 2001, if you remember, we used to demonstrate peaceably. There was a time when every Friday, Zambians wore a ribbon. 
That was demonstrating basically. Why should the PF stop citizens from demonstrating within the laws, confines of the law? Why are PF asking citizens not to enjoy their constitutional rights, their fundamental human rights? It is how governments that have failed behave to suppress, to oppress citizens, and citizens are above any government that oppresses them because they are the ones that put the government in office. It is them. So the answer to your question is yes. When we a call for a peaceful demonstrations, if Zambians are hating, if they don't like the internet, WhatsApp tax, if they don't like the withholding tax, they don't like the borrow tax, they don't like all these costs that have been lumped on them, only to support lavish expenditure of those corrupt in the field, they must express their views. And that's constitutional, that is legal. Absolutely legal. Thank you. Yes, lady. Yes, um, my name is Abdullah Mutenda from Diamond TV. You mentioned the issue of um, uh, the PF government being uh, in uh, excess uh, corruption. Mm. And uh, you know, it has been very difficult even to get to the other side because. The moment you mention corruption, they always challenge to say, can you provide evidence? What yes. would you say to that? Evidence of corruption. I think before, some time back, citizens may have been looking for evidence. They may have been having arguments about evidence. Now, I don't think that is a debate. Let's give an example of the corruption in the purchase of ambulances. The PF announced that they will buy ambulances at $250,000 plus each. Within a few days of announcing that, madam, I think you are aware, since you are a journalist, that the donor country offered the same or better, in fact, better ambulances, better quality vehicles at $75,000 or thereabouts per ambulance. So a quick number show you that the PF stole from you, they stole from a marketeer over two, around $200,000 per ambulance. There is evidence. It is clear that they kept that child in school. Over $700,000 by buying an ambulance, sorry, fire tender at $1 million each. Should we debate those issues? They themselves, as PF, ended up insuring those fire tenders at the true value because insurance means you insure a motor vehicle so that if it's damaged, you can replace it, you can buy another one. And they only insured these fire tenders for $250,000 which reflects the true value of each fighter. So where is the 700,000 plus gone? Stolen through corruption. That same money that should have sent a child to school, that same money that the PF should have funded a better maize price to the farmers that are suffering. That same money that they should have built markets with clean water, with toilets, so that we can avoid cholera. That's the money. That is the issue. If it helps you, a third example is the Lusaka and Dollar Road, which is less than 350 kilometers. And the PF is spending $1.2 billion on that road. How is that evidence? I said earlier, countries in the region are building better quality roads at a lower cost. Zimbabwe is going to build a road from Bay Bridge to Chirundu, our border post here, a distance of around 1,000 kilometers, and they'll be spending $1 billion. So if you compare, you are saying that basically Zimbabwe is spending $1 million per kilometer isn't it? But here we are spending a short road so
so much money. If you say it's 350 kilometers from dollar to Lusaka, we should spend 350 million dollars. Why are we spending 1.2 million dollars? Rough numbers, it means the PF is stealing through corruption over 700 million dollars. What more evidence are we looking for? Honestly, as citizens, we must ask ourselves, how can we sit and watch people wrapping the country, increasing the debt which they were arguing about not long ago, that the debt was so small, until the IMF said they would not lend the money because Zambia was hiding debt. Now we know it's not a matter of hiding that this country PF in particular, in the few years they've been in government, they've rocked up a debt burden over 15, 16 billion dollars. Now it's common knowledge. But why were they hiding the debt? Because they were trying to cheat you citizens. They are not just cheating you citizens, they are cheating the international community that is supporting Zambia. Now, how can you have a government like that? That blatantly in daylight are telling lies. They are stealing from citizens. They are even stealing shamelessly from unborn children. They are leaving the country with a dead burden, my friend, that even when a decent government takes office, the anchors upon which to construct the economy will have been destroyed. I think I've given enough examples. You want more examples? We can discuss. But I think I've given enough examples. Yes, Kara? Oh. Any more questions? We are done. I don't know if this question can make, uh, where the minister said they are losing 22 million USA dollar. Uh, WhatsApp, you, because people they use WhatsApp calls and uh, Facebook. Now, when people they are buying uh, bundles, they buy talk time. Now, how true is that uh, the government is losing 22 million USA dollars? <coughs> yeah, look. If you watched that particular minister talk about this tax or levy on internet WhatsApp, you can actually read between the lines that there is a joker. There is a big joker. Not actually just a joker, but an abusive individual. There is a, a so-called cabinet. You sit there, you introduce a levy on internet WhatsApp. People buy bundles. They do, they're not given bundles free of charge. They buy bundles. It means they've already paid for those costs. And now, how is it that they can say they're losing $22 million? They're losing from who? The issue is that they are saying they would like to earn an extra $22 million to steal. They would like to earn extra money from you and I to spend lavish. That is the complaint. But she was masquerading and hiding it like they are losing money. They are not losing money because citizens are paying for the internet calls because they buy bundles already. And in there, there are taxes that sit already. That's why I was outlining to you the taxes that we are paying already. And this is another, yet another cruel action by the PF. And how, can, how, how much more pain do they want Zambians to endure? Can you imagine the morality, my friend, of this? A child is not in school because the parents have no money. The little money they were earning on the rentals, it's been taken by government. They want to make an internet call to ask a supplier of vegetables, this is a marketer, so that she can go and order vegetables and sell 
in a market or roadside where the customers are not buying because there is no money in the economy. Now, that marketeer has to pay 15 way on top of what she has paid already. Where is the morality? Where is this concept that they are party for the poor? Which poor? Where is the human feeling? Where is it that if you are a leader, you are supposed to go and give services, give help to the people? In the PF, we've seen a reversal of leadership where they seek leadership to go and steal, to go and take from the people every single day. Zambians, reclaim your country. Zambians, you are the ones that need to be saved. You should not be saving politicians. Politicians must save you. But under the PF is the reverse. It is up to you as citizens to say, this is it. We draw the line here. No more of this daylight robbery from us. This is daylight robbery. Because you know, they can't borrow from the IMF now. Even the Chinese are waking up now that their debt may never be repaid because the economy is too small for the level of debt that has been acquired. So what do they do, my friend? They revert now to the new Zambians to fund them. She was indirectly saying, you Zambians who are suffering, who have no food at home, who are relying on Ekapamela, who are relying on uh, uh, Mupiru, Mutipa Sendara Matifuna TDA said, as government, as PF, they want you who are already burdened to support their lavish expenditure. At what point will you say enough is enough? It is you, the citizens. We saw this in the late 80s where the one-party regime then thought Zambians are too docile, they can do nothing. Zambians are not docile. Zambians are watching. Zambians are taking decisions. Zambians will gather courage as they have done before. So my friend, there is no issue of losing. A few days ago, or when they announced this measure, they said they want to protect jobs. Didn't they say so? They want to protect jobs. Which jobs do they want to protect? They are charging Airtel $58 million plus, close to $60 million. They have slapped Airtel penalties of $60 million thereabout. And Airtel, when they are slapped with that money, by ZRA, Airtel will come to you to increase the tariff. In addition to the WhatsApp levy they put, Airtel will come to you as the users of that facility. You may not see it yourselves, but it will come through. They will increase the tariff, and you won't see it in this WhatsApp, sorry, on the scratch card. You will just notice that when you scratch, you load your airtime, it doesn't take long. It's finished. Because Airtel now will be getting that money from you to pass to the government to pay that $60 million. And eventually, you will have less and less money. There will be no jobs that are protected. It is the PF that are killing jobs. It is not you, the users of internet and WhatsApp. It is the PF, as I said, for you to fund the corruption, to fund the overborrowing, to fund the overexpenditure. That they are incurring, squeezing even blood. I noticed what Shishimba Kambudi said, I think, in the paper today, that soon they will start charging you for something I can't say on air here. I'm sure you, you read the papers today. They will charge you for answering the call of nature. They say, pay a tax. Why did you answer the call of nature? That's what my colleague Shishimba Kambudi has said. And I agree with him. 
If you take a glass of water, we have paid for the water already, soon they will introduce a tax, a levy to say, for the act of drinking water, we would like you to pay the PF government. Where do they take the money? Corruption. For their children only to live well when your children and your future is gone. That's a quote the people of Zambia. We did warn the people of Zambia, we alerted you three, four years ago that they will be overborrowed. You didn't believe us. They called us names. No, HH is bitter. Who is bitter now? HH, who warned you? Who had the vision to see? And those who were arguing, and they've now taken it to a detra. We said to you that the PF will collapse the economy because they have no plan. They are a clueless team. And today, it is happening. Who is bitter? We who gave you advance warning, or they? It is they. We told you that these people have no prudence. They will spend more money than they earn. And they are doing exactly that. Now we are saying to you, the economy is melted. It's gone. There's a liquidity crunch. There's no money. There's a credit crunch. You can't borrow. There's a loan crunch. No one will give you money at a lower cost because PF has increased the cost of borrowing, not just national borrowing, but at the individual level. That's why the credit rating agencies, my friend, have downgraded Zambia's credit rating to junk status. It is these things we have been telling and advising Zambians for some time now. The English will say the chickens have come home to roost. It's now open for all to see. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, as we wind up. Yes. Mm, more up on the mask. We have extensively outlined in the countries with the present social economic status. But what then do you propose maybe to the government for anyone as the immediate remedies for all this? I, I think. The remedies we've been saying them longer for a long time. For a long time we've been giving remedies. First remedy, don't borrow money. Don't borrow money unnecessarily. Number one, my dear friend Monga. Don't number two. When you borrow, don't borrow for consumption. Don't borrow to eat the money on the roads, on ambulances, on other areas. Because you will never get any return from that money. It will be gone. It's like money you throw in a river, fast running river, and it's gone. You never recover it. We've given this advice before. When you borrow, number three, do not borrow at a high cost. PF has been borrowing at high cost through the euro bonds. And because they've been borrowing at high cost, instead of borrowing at a lower cost, at zero interest rate, at 3% interest rate, they've been borrowing at 10% interest rate, whose yield rates now have gone up. So that is the reason they failed to pay. That's why they asked a, a visiting Turkish president publicly. Mr. Lungu asked a Turkish president who is visiting that, can you help me pay the 70, $750 million euro bond? How embarrassing it is. It's even embarrassing every citizen. Mr. Lungu did not know that the Turkish economy was also in a meltdown. You see lack of knowledge, what it does. The price we're paying for having somebody with very little knowledge or interest in managing the affairs of your country. This is the price we're paying. We're paying. So, it is important for us, we've said it before, that we will not borrow recklessly. We will, uh, 
when we borrow sparingly, we will borrow for investment so that you can generate returns to support the loan repayment as well as to repay the loan through interest and to grow the economy longer, to create jobs. That is what we would do ourselves, as simple as that. We have also said that we as UPND focus is to grow the economy by managing our resources properly, by managing agriculture properly, making sure that we ensure that inputs, fertilizer, seed, equipment like plows are provided to farmers at a lower cost. Making sure that the farmers are given a good price. Not 60 quart, 65 quarter monger. I issued a statement on that. That will kill agriculture. Then the PF increased the price by another 5 quarter and made it 70 quarter. That is not enough. When we issued a statement ourselves, we said the maize price should be 90,000 quarter and above. And today you have seen Zambia buying maize at 95 quarter. So who was right? HH, UPND on one side or PF? Obviously, it's HH. If they took our advice, it means farmers will get a better price of at least above 90 quarter. And that's why private buyers are giving now 95 quarter. It means we are in tandem, we understand agriculture the same way with the private buyers and not the government who are killing farming. So we would say, don't kill farming, grow farming. And you don't end by just lowering the cost of inputs so that you lower the cost of production, you give a good price, but as I've said, you also buy the crop on time. As you should provide inputs on time, you should buy the crop on time. Not just maize, but maize, groundnuts, groundnuts, cotton, fodia, hmm? fodia, all of this. Then you will revive agriculture. Monga, we have also said, do not sell maize to Congo. Do not sell maize to Malawi. Sell meal meal to Congo, dear a value-added product. Sell stock feed to Botswana. Don't sell maize. Sell a value-added product. Why? Because a value-added product gives you a higher return. It also creates the jobs in Zambia. If you sell maize to Congo Diara and to Botswana instead of milli meal and Stock feed, you are going to create jobs in Congo Tia. Those are clear recommendations and solutions. We said invest in tourism, lower the income to Zimbabwe. You lose revenue. This is what we've been saying for a long time. By lowering the cost of the tourism products, you will increase people who utilize the service who we'll spend more days in the hotels by doing that you will feed more residents in a hotel you will need more laundry you will need to buy more food you will need to buy more beverages by doing that you create more jobs in the hotel sector and the hotel sector will contribute to economic growth agriculture will contribute to economic growth energy invest in there because you get a return. Invest in business overall, reduce the cost of doing business. While once you reduce the cost of doing business, you expect the investment climate to be attractive. And when it's attractive, more investment will come. When more investment comes, the economy will grow, not at 2% as it is now, but it will grow at 6 7%. Then, with that level of growth, you can create a job for the youth, you can send children, including orphans, to school, 
And with reduction in expenditure, we have said it before, cut government expenditure. But what is government doing? They're spending more. What do you get? You get a crisis like where we are now. Salaries are not paid on time. We said pay workers' salaries on time. Council workers have not been paid, some of them, for June salaries, for July salaries, let alone August. I don't think they will pay. You have seen some councillors, some council staff talking on television that they've not been paid their salaries. But the PF are asking for $22 million more to fund their luxuries, to fund their corruption. My friend, when you pay salaries on time, tax citizens less, that's another measure. Reduce the taxes. Reduce the taxes. When you reduce the taxes, homes, households will have more money, you pay their salaries on time, they will be able to send their children to school, let alone buying something from the economy, vegetables, they will buy milli meal, they will buy whatever is on sale, they pay for transport. That is what will help grow the economy and create jobs. Take out, take down the tax burden. There are many other measures we can do. Cut the size of political government. Reduce the number of ministers even more because they are not productive, they are just consuming. Don't buy new vehicles for ministers. They've just bought, bought a lot of vehicles for ministers when they are taxing you for internet. They, you pay the internet tax, my friend, 50 away. They take your money and go and buy luxury cars for themselves. The question of my friend, lower the cost of political government. Cut the number of ministers. Don't buy vehicles all the time. Use that money to support children in school. Use that money to support youth in entrepreneurship projects and so the youth can get jobs, can employ themselves. Make sure that contracts don't go to foreign companies only, even to build a small toilet. The contract goes to a foreign company. It means the money is going out of the country. We would like the contracts to go to Zambians and Zambian companies to build clinics, to build toilets in markets, to build markets. We want citizens to have the right of trade in making blocks in this country. Sectors such as raising chickens, producing eggs, that is, those are sectors that should go to Zambia. When those sectors go to Zambians, Zambians are supported by their government through credit, provide credit, affordable credit. I mentioned to you that because of our expenditure, because of corruption, because of overborrowing, the credit rating has been downgraded to junk. Junk status means you can't borrow money at a lower interest rate. If you can't borrow money at a lower interest, you cannot give money to the youth companies, the women companies, at a lower rate. When you don't do that, you don't grow the economy, you don't help households, poverty reigns and rules the day. That's the story of PF. But I think I've given enough measures of what we could do ourselves or what should be done to revive the economy. PF has no capacity, my friends. I know some people are saying, give them time. How much more time do you want to give me? How much more time do you want to endure? I mean pain. How many more children do you want to see out of school, out of jobs? How many? How many more people do you want to die because there are no medicines in hospitals? This is the price of keeping a party like PF in office. It's huge. And the suffering doesn't select where you were born, what language you speak. Everybody suffering. Let us unite. Let us work together as a country. Let us not focus on negatives towards each other. Let us focus on how each one can contribute in order to rebuild our country's economy. But that cannot happen under PF. It is impossible. We said so to you many years ago, 2011, 2012. You didn't believe us. I think now you believe us. The test of the pudding is in the eating. You are testing the sour and painful, bad, 
divisible here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did you get the measures, Mom? Yes, sir. Did you get the measures? Yes. All of you, did you get the measures? Yes. All it was uh, Japanese speaking.